Happy Thursday. Great to have you with us today. A fantastic lineup on tap. Thanks for making us a part of your day. Friday morning at 11, Metro General Manager Paul Wiedefeld is expected to announce details of a major maintenance and safety effort by WMATA. And we'll carry those remarks for you live. The region has a big stake in whether the new top man at the agency can, in this case literally, make the trains run on time and in a safe manner. It's where we begin our monthly one-on-one -on -one conversation with Phil Mendelson, a Democrat. He serves at large. He is, of course, the chairman of the D.C. Council. Good, Good morning, to have you with us. Thanks very much for your time. Sure. Earlier in the week, we had D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser here live for an hour, and she said she's looking to see from WMATA a real plan, not what she described as a knee-jerk plan, but a real plan. What do you think Metro needs to be doing right now, given all the problems that the agency is suffering and, and all the inconvenience and uh, potentially beyond inconvenience in terms of safety that, that people who, visitors, residents, everyone, uh, all the issues we face when we ride the rails. Well, you mentioned that the mayor had called for a real plan. The problem is that WMATA over the years has understated what its needs are and what the problems are. And what we're seeing today is the accumulation of deferred maintenance and underselling themselves, understating their needs. Um, and it's time that we get really serious and confront what needs to be done. Do you think the folks at the top knew everything uh, that uh, has been bedeviling the agency? Some say for decades. There's even the suggestion that the issues date back to how the system was built back in the 60s and 70s. Do you think they sort of had it all uh, in, their, in their mind or, or in a report somewhere and didn't communicate it? Or is it possible they didn't fully get what all the issues I'd were? I'd say both. I mean, I think it's, um, to some extent, it's uh, what they knew or should have known to some extent. Uh, I'm reminded that my colleague uh, Jack Evans, who's now the chair of the board as well as a member of the city council, has said uh, in frustration that the NTSB report the other day blames Metro, and as Jack puts it, there's no Mr. or Mrs. Metro. Who? Who? And uh, the report doesn't say who. Now, it shouldn't just be about trying to identify one person and firing them or identifying one person so we can point fingers, but uh, we do, there ought to be some accountability, and if we're going to change the culture, the um, I mean, I, I think there is a culture of lack of um, taking seriously enough the need for reliability and safety. And if we're going to change that, then we need to know who uh, is going to make a difference in that organization. Uh, do, you think, do, you, do you feel like Paul Wiedefeld is the guy to begin this process? Everybody says he is. I've worked with him a little bit and have been impressed. Uh, but I've not worked closely, so I can't say too much there. But uh, he has an opportunity. He has a, actually a golden opportunity, as bad as the complaints about Metro are today. Because of that, Mr. Wiedefeld and the board has the ability to seize upon that, to, to press the region for regional, um, what do I want to say, um, a dedicated uh, source of income for Metro. We're the only system that doesn't have a dedicated funding source. Uh, he has the ability to press with regard to safety changes and improvements. Um, he had, I mean, I think there's just a lot more of an acceptance that we got a problem and we've got to make some changes and some serious changes. What jumped out at you from the NTSB report? Oh, there were a lot of things, but I think it's really the accumulation of deferral, if you will, deferral of um, and taking seriously uh, safety or reliability. And let me just say, because we're all talking about safety, mm -hmm. I, I don't think that Metro is unsafe. Uh, I ride the rail and I'm willing to continue riding the rail. I'm not worried for my life in riding the rail. But when we see breakdowns, uh, that shouldn't be happening. And that speaks to safety and reliability. Is it possible that in the short term, we'll be paying more and getting less? And by that I mean, uh, I don't you know, possibly increases at the fare box, but more what I had in mind was greater uh, uh, flow of money from Maryland, D.C., and Virginia, which, of course, they don't print money. They get money mm -hmm. from us, the taxpayers. So that's the sense where I mean we taxpayers in the region would pay more and get less. What do I mean there? That uh, given that the ways of getting caught up on maintenance and safety and all of it, uh, if you do it in the ways that are not that inconvenient, 
you, can, you, you, you never get caught up, and maybe you even fall farther behind. So um, if, if Wiedefeld announces tomorrow a more aggressive catch-up plan and one that involves more inconvenience, that's how I put together this notion of paying more and getting yeah. less in the short term in, in, in the goal, we hope, of ending up in a better place. Well, I think it's unavoidable. Uh, the, the incremental approach that they've taken with regard to uh, maintenance has been way too slow and the system is too large for too slow a, a, um, a maintenance or Im upgrade effort. Uh, so I think we're going to see some inconvenience and I think the jurisdictions are going to have to pay more. You know, we have a, um, a tradition, if you will, in this region, the federal government and the local governments, that when something isn't working right, we kind of withhold money until you get your act together. And there's something to be said for that approach, but I don't think that's going to work with regard to WMATA. I think the jurisdictions are going to have to step up because WMATA needs the money to be, to be able to to um, pay for the new car, rail cars and for the new rails and for all the track work that needs to be done. They need the money, and we need to put it put it there. So uh, rather than say we're going to withhold, what we need to do is increase monitoring to make sure that what they're doing, they're actually doing. I mean, it, it's just amazing to me that uh, after the 2009 Fort Totten accident, after the, um, the fire at LaFont Plaza a year ago, all these uh, changes were made and then we find out that in fact they weren't made. And uh, that, that has got to change and it changes in part with some oversight uh, on mm -hmm. the part of the jurisdictions in the region to make sure that Metro is actually using the additional dollars uh, wisely and uh, to effect. But mostly uh, people and policies within the agency doing what needs to be done at the critical time, not the overseers. As critical as oversight is, it's having the right people, the right sense of urgency, the right policies, the right everything within WMATA yes. so it's not this always catch up. I mean oversight to a certain extent is about catch up uh, and uh, coming in after something doesn't work right. It doesn't uh, re replace yeah, we have to just start doing things differently, and the we is the region as well as WMATA. What questions did you ask after the CSX derailment? Um, well, to me, the, the big concern with the CSX derailment is that it reminds us of the vulnerability of uh, us as a city and us as the nation's capital to um, hazardous chemicals. And while the hazardous chemicals on the uh, CSX train were not the most hazardous, Still, we have as a reality that there are hazardous chemicals that are going through the city. I think it's appropriate that freight goes through the city, and it's important to business. But uh, we've got the, the, the hazardous stuff has to be routed around. It can't go through the city. Were these empty cars that, ha that had like residual amounts of something in them? Or, I mean, did any my, under my understanding is some were empty, some were full. And I think the ones that were leaking had, um, they were, had more than just an empty cargo. So did any red flags go up for you in anything that you heard in, in briefings or response to questions? Uh, because it's, I mean, is it, is it right to understand that, that some stuff goes around and, and other stuff is okay to go through based on the perceived volatility of it? That's my understanding, that the most hazardous is routed around, but in fact the, the district as a local government and the other local governments in the region have very limited ability to know to exactly what is going through their jurisdiction. But it is knowable. It's a question of whether the partnership with CSX, and I remember being it's at a... It's not clear how knowable it is, and I but asked I mean, about No, but I mean, in the 21st century, the, it's possible to communicate. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, the, the CSX has an inventory of what's on its train. Right. They know exactly. But uh, they, uh, for security reasons, don't want to be telling everybody. And that makes some sense. I see. But the difficulty for the local jurisdictions is that CSX has ma maintained, and there's some validity to this, that they are interstate commerce and therefore are answerable only to the federal government. Well, I'm fine with the reality that they're interstate commerce and the district in Maryland and, and Pennsylvania can't each be imposing different requirements on the railroad, mm -hmm. but uh, it goes too far in that then CSX won't work with the local, with the states or the local jurisdictions, and uh, that puts us at a disadvantage. Talking with DC Council Chairman Phil Mendelson, we'll pause here a break, but then much more of News Talk for this Cinco de Mayo Thursday after this.